Now water leaks are super common within a sink base or a vanity base. Whether that's water leaks coming from your drain pipe or the actual water lines themselves, this happens all the time and the water leak can be going on for months and months before you or somebody else detects it. Now this is even more prevalent in my rentals. When I'm doing a turnover between tenants, it seems like half of the vanity bases and sink bases I look at have some form of leak, but because there's so much stuff that we usually, all of us, usually pack within these, these cabinets, it's hard to see and you're just not down there that much. And if you're a renter, that's probably not on the top of things you're worried about. So how do we do a little preventative maintenance to save ourselves from replacing this base in the future or having to replace the entire cabinet or even worse if this is on the second level. So if you have a duplex, you're on the second level and you're not detecting that until you have water spots in your ceiling, which can be a whole nother issue and a lot more money and time. So let's keep it simple keep the budget under $5. And what I'm gonna use actually is just peel and stick floor tiles. Now, because I'm not looking for flooring in my dream home, I'm very flexible with what type of tile. And I usually go and look for the discount clearance tiles. And for instance, this is an Armstrong product, pretty good product, two millimeters thick for 47 cents per tile or per square foot. So I will be able to get this in for about $4 to line this whole cabinet with something that's gonna be much more water resistant. So let me show you how. So for any project where you're adhering something to the floor or to the cabinet base like this, you wanna make sure it's clean. So I'm just using water on a paper towel. You could use a cloth. I'm cleaning up all the dirt, debris, hair, dust, or anything else. And you can see it really adds up and you wanna get that all off. Now, if there's anything else, any other residue that's a little sticky, I do use Goo Gone and that can help you pull up any of that residue. But even after cleaning with that, I would wanna come back through with just a paper towel with water and then wipe everything down again to make sure there's nothing being left behind and then let it sit and dry. Then once everything's dry, the first tile I'm gonna put in the corner with no cuts. So that's a 12 by 12 inch tile and I'm gonna use a flooring roller to make sure it's adhered to the base and consistent pressure all the way through. Then I'll take my measurements because you will not be able to fit two 12 inch tiles in. It's 10 and three quarters are my measurements. So I measured on both sides and I'll mark on one side and then the other. And then once I have my marks transferred to the back side of the tile, I'll take a straight edge and a sharp razor blade. And I'll just score the back side of the tile don't have to apply too hard and don't scratch your flooring as well. Now you'll break that and then just cut that front surface and now you have your next tile to put into place. Easy enough, so you'll start lining everything up and again, every time you'll really want to roll that out, making sure the tiles are secure. Then I'll just push through the rest of these six in total. And this is a 36 inch sink base. So you'll just need to know the internal dimensions to know how many tiles that you need to get. The only other thing is I would use clear silicone caulk and I would lay a bead down around the entire perimeter. Doesn't have to be perfect, but in this case, if a lot of water goes onto the surface, I don't want it to flow to the sides or to the back. I would like it to come out the front onto the floor so it's apparent to the renter or apparent to me if it's my own house. I will put a little bit of a bead in the front, but actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe this off flush, just filling in any gaps between the tile and the front of the cabinet, but allowing water to flow out the front if there was a bad leak. So that's it, it's a super quick project and I think it makes your base of your cabinets a lot more robust to any sort of water leaks. This has been a great addition to my rental properties and saves me maintenance in the long run. Now earlier I said the tiles cost me $4 and if you did the math, you're like six tiles, 47 cents, wouldn't that be closer to $3? Well, I do recommend getting a couple extra tiles. So if you need six tiles to cover, just get eight. So you're not running to the home improvement store again if you have a small issue with the cuts or you need an extra one. Then if you have a situation where the plumbing is coming up through your cabinet and someone cut a big hole like this one, 
What I would do is I'd, I would cut the tile to the surface and then I'd run a bead of caulk from the side around the hole to the other side of your cabinet. Then if you do have a bad water leak where water's coming on the base of the cabinet, it will flow out the front and not down through that hole. So just a suggestion because I know not all installations are gonna be like this. But as always, let me know what you guys think. Is this super tacky, you would never do this, looks terrible, or for the money, $4 worth of tile, $3 depending on if you have no issues, and then about $3 actually for the silicone. So all in, you're probably at about six or $7 for this project, opposed to the trays you can get online, which are 30 to $50. So I think it's a good trade off and can kind of refresh your cabinet if you have a base that's a little beat up. Now, before you take off, if you haven't already subscribe to our channel as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with repairs and improvements around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.